Greetings, Earthlings. This is the COVID Chronicles. I am your host, Rick Richards. It is Saturday night, almost live, March 28, 2020. And uh, it is a gray overcast day here on the West Coast. From my chamber of solitude, I can look out and I can see that nasty weather. I hope everybody is practicing not social distancing, but physical distancing. This is the term we are now using because social distancing implies antisocial behavior. And so the term is now physical distancing. Um, I have finished my 14 day quarantine period, although I guess I have to restart it or something. But anyways, I was out and about today. I did manage to get out and about. And unfortunately, one of the few stores that is open is JISC. So my wife dragged me off to JISC. You know, I, I think every store on the planet will be closed, but not JISC. And uh, that's where I was today. I was looking at some coat hangers. It's a lot of fun taking some selfies in the mirror section. I managed to get out to a TNT supermarket too. I was very curious. I go to TNT sometimes because you know what? Whatever there's a shortage on, the TNT market has it. They have lots of milk. They have lots of eggs because you Westerners, you white people and brown people are afraid of TNT. But let me tell you, I have gone in several times. They even have a buffet open. They have a buffet. They put plastic lids over the food, but you can still get it. So I don't know, man, that's either really, really stupid and reckless or in a strange kind of way, it's admirable. The people at TNT are saying, fuck it, we're going to make money. <laughs> we don't give a shit. Everything stays open. But sir, what about the buffet? Keep the buffet open. But people could die, sir. Oh, put a cover on the damn food. That's what they're doing there. And so I went there. Everybody's wearing masks. <laughs> Not me, though. So if I break out into a cold sweat, you'll know why. You'll know why. We can point the finger squarely at TNT. But we got a good show for you tonight. Tonight is all about the white pills. After the updates, it's all about the white pills. But first, but first, let's do our shout outs. Getting a big list of shout outs now. Shout out to Grace. Shout out Don Buckler, Kim, Tammy, Jixer, my boy Jixer, Terry McLean, Angie, my gray haired old daddy who's been banished from the casinos and has nothing to do and hasn't figured out how to, how to gamble online. Knock on wood. Let's hope that doesn't happen. Then we got a real problem. Let's hope he doesn't discover porn online either. That, that could also be a bit of a problem. Shout out to Tanya, to Sandy, Rick, and Rhonda. Special friend of the show, Lisa. Charlene, Carol, Chad, and Lori. And Dwayne Knutson. Big shout out to Dwayne Knutson. You know, faithful, faithful viewer of the show. Dwayne. Dwayne is a top-notch electrician, and he is also an excellent drummer and a funny guy. So in an apocalypse-type situation, Dwayne would be a high draft pick. Uh, he could do just about anything for you, right? Hey, we need lights. Somebody get Dwayne. Get Dwayne to set up some lights. Hey, we need some entertainment. Pick up your pace, boy. Grab, grab a, a bucket. Turn over a bucket and start drumming, and Dwayne could do that. He could bang out some drums. He could set up electricity. He could tell some stories. Very entertaining person. Ideal. Ideal in an apocalypse. And you know what? I mean, I don't think we have to start thinking of who we're going to draft in an apocalypse or a Mad Max type uh, scenario. Especially on tonight's show. Tonight's show is, the show is all about the white pills. All about the good stuff, right? But you never know, right? So, um, first. First, I must remind you all that we now have a sponsor for the show. And it is Athletic Alliance, makers of the Advanced Nootropic, which I pound every day. I pound some right now, along with my monster, who hasn't, hasn't come on as a sponsor yet. Not yet. You better, monster. You got a short window. I'll dump you for another energy drink, man. I swear. Ah, things are getting wild around here. Wild. So let's have a quick word from our sponsor. back. 
also don't let me forget two other special shout outs. Producer Dave Darnley, feed me content, lining up guests, which we're going to have next week. We're going to have a lab technician. We're going to have um, a CFL pick player probably as well. Very exciting, right? Let's find out how these guys are dealing with this situation. So after that word from our sponsor, let's go and look at our updates. Let's see what's happening with this damn virus. Let's see where we are at. As always, these things change so quickly that we have to refresh. And we've done that. We've refreshed. So <clears throat> the coronavirus is now up to 662,000 cases. Damn, it seems like just a couple of days ago it was 400,000. 30,000 deaths, 141,000 recovered. Let's scroll down to the countries. They've all pretty much presented their data. The United States, 19,000 new cases. I mean, this really is just mind blowing. This is just mind blowing how fast this is coming out of the United States. And to think they wanted to put US troops on the Canadian border. What the fuck are you guys thinking that we're gonna go running into the United States? I actually had a trip planned. Most people won't know this and it was a source of great frustration to me and I'll admit, I'll admit I was very, very stubborn about it. Producer Dave Darnley knows. I was hell bent on going down there. I was, we had a trip uh, lined up for 10 days, business trip, of course. And I had to reschedule it three times. And then finally, I, the day before I left, I finally canceled it. And this was March 17th, I think. And within a couple of days, the borders were closed. So that's canceling the trip was when I basically started this show uh, out of frustration. But I think uh, in retrospect, that was probably a pretty good idea. Uh, let's take a, a little deeper look at the U.S. here. So 123,000, 2,211 deaths. And I, I think when all of this is said and done, we are going to see the U.S. as most certainly the epicenter in the world of cases. Well, actually, I guess Europe would be. But uh, for a single country, I think it's going to be the United States without any question at all. New York, 53,000 cases in New York, 7,000 new cases. The death count is very high. Uh, the new deaths also very high. They look like they're about close to 30%, maybe about 27, 28%. So uh, that death rate is gonna double in a few days, about three or four days. Uh, New Jersey, a lot of spillover, I imagine. California, uh, well, California is a big state, so I mean, it's okay. It seems to be doing a little bit better. Still a pretty high rate of transmission there. Uh, Michigan goes on and on. Florida, Illinois, and so on. And, you know, it's, it's interesting. I mean, uh, one of the things I heard Donald Trump, and this is not confirmed yet, uh, he said he was thinking about it, so I haven't really laid this out as something that's actually happening. But he has mentioned that he is thinking of essentially quarantining entire states and quarantining New York, uh, probably New Jersey, and I think Illinois was the other one. I'm not sure why Illinois. It doesn't seem to be particularly worse than, um, you know, some of the other places like, say, Michigan, for example. But, um, yeah, so that's, that's in the works. Um, and most of the other numbers are pretty static from this morning. Over a thousand people have now died in the UK, 260 new deaths. So this number is moving up rapidly as well. Uh, that should be at 2000 by April 2nd or 3rd, I would guess, or April, maybe even April 1st. And one of the things I told you guys we got to watch for is some of these some of these other European places, I, I don't know why this has really gotten so um, so out of hand in Europe. I mean, I guess one thing is the uh, the unhindered travel. Um, the other thing is just that the borders are so open with um, other parts of the world. But um, the places I told you that we really have to keep an eye on <clears throat> are Switzerland, um, the Netherlands, Belgium, like all these places that didn't get their first case until February. In some cases, it's only been just over a month. And I mean, you know, Switzerland is not a huge country. 
I was actually there last year, Switzerland, and it's a beautiful place. But they're not a big country, and um, they're really moving up the number of cases. The Netherlands is not a huge country either. It's maybe like 12, maybe a third the size of Canada in terms of population. And they, they're closing in on 10,000 cases. And they've only had this for a month. So that's certainly, uh, certainly quite alarming. They will, they'll, they'll definitely move over 1,000 deaths. Uh, here we see Canada, 5,600, 60 deaths. Uh, we're moving a little bit slower. And I mean, there's a lot of promising things uh, to look at with Canada, which we will explore. Specifically within Canada, uh, let's take a look at some current developments. <clears throat> All right. A total, we have nearly 6,000, but we have 472 people that have recovered and 61 who have died. So for every one person that dies, about seven recover. And for every seven that recover and one that's died, um, there's another, I guess it would be about 20, well, no, probably about six, 60 to 80 that have um, the virus and don't take any action at all. Like when someone's recovered, I mean, that's because they've gone into some sort of care and it's been determined that they've um, that they have the virus and that they've recovered. But the majority of people um, just have it and they either recover at home or the symptoms aren't severe enough for them really to do much. Ontario, 151 new cases. Quebec, things are really kind of spiraling out of, if there's any province that's really looking at a problem here, um, it's Quebec. And I know they have a more sophisticated method of testing there now, uh, but still, you know, the number of deaths has really skyrocketed too. Uh, Manitoba now has their first death. Uh, British Columbia, our total is now 884 in the province, 92 new cases. So new cases, yeah, that's a, an expansion of the testing. Uh, the number of deaths, though, are not really creeping up too much. And it's interesting, Newfoundland and Labrador now have 120 cases. Um, and they were, they were one of the first jurisdictions to close their borders in North America, like Newfoundland's an island, right? And they, they closed off not just international travel, but um, interprovincial travel as well. <clears throat> and that is uh, something that could be on the cards in Canada as well. That's, that hasn't been closed. But as of this morning, um, travelers, and, and this announcement was made this morning, travelers within Canada if they're showing symptoms of the coronavirus, they're not allowed to travel. And uh, this, this just became, I guess, not a law, but some, I don't know, th this became some sort of official policy today. And um, I was struck by the thought that, okay, so, so what was happening yesterday? So if somebody got onto a plane sweating profusely and struggling to breathe, they would just say, okay, come on on. You say you're fine. We believe you, you know, like, it's, it's only today that people with symptoms have been stopped? Okay. Um, Yukon, Northwest Territories have cases. Nunavut is one of the only places without a case. So, hey, buy real estate in Nunavut. There you go. Uh, everybody is having a bad experience, but up north, they're having none of it. <laughs> Still got it. Even in, even in a pandemic, man, I can still crank it out. All right. All right. So, so let's get on to some of the white pills. Got my trusty sheet here. There's been a lot of bad news, a lot of shitty news, to be honest, for the last two weeks. And um, unfortunately, there's no real indication that the shitty news is going to end. Seems like we're going to keep getting shitty news. Maybe I will change this to the shitty news channel. But it's not all shitty news. It is not all shitty news. I am going to share some good news with you right now. So the first thing we are looking at is cures and vaccines. When can we expect a vaccine or a cure? I know there's a lot of, um, I don't even like to call them anti-vaxxers. 
I think anybody that has um, has concerns or hesitations uh, on vaccines, I think that's perfectly within your right. I mean, who the hell knows what they're putting in there? And they don't. Uh, there is a lot of coercion involved with vaccines. Like, oh, you can't you can't start school until you've had a vaccine. We know the big push on for the flu. Uh, you know, there's requests to get vaccinated against the flu, which I've never done, by the way, and I've never gotten the flu. Um, but the other side to that coin is if you look at um, certain things that are happening around the world, uh, people are living more, populations are exploding, and um, in large part, that is a result of things like immunization, vaccination, like who gets polio anymore, right? Uh, does anybody, anybody in my age group remember these things? You know, when you're a kid, you used to get like a, or baby, you used to get a booster shot. But I noticed that, I know, gun chew. I noticed that um, they don't do that anymore. So if anybody knows when they stop doing that and why they're so goddamn ugly, like they give you a shot that gives you like a scar the size of, I don't know, a dime maybe for the rest of your life, right? Anyways, I think uh, I'd like to know what, what year they cut that off because I don't think people in their 30s have those. Although I'm what, like about 39. So maybe I'm at the end, right? Um, so anyways, getting on with our vaccines, um, even at their most effective and draconian containment strategies have only slowed the spread of the respiratory disease COVID-19 with the World Health Organization finally declaring a pandemic. We all know that and all eyes have turned towards the prospect of a vaccine. About 35 companies and academic institutions are racing to create a vaccine, at least four of which uh, already have candidates they have been testing in animals. The first of these, produced by Boston-based biotech firm Moderna, will enter human trials imminently. Imminently means right now. This is unprecedented speed. So there you go. Um, there is vaccines being worked on as we speak, as you would expect, uh, but they're going into trials right away. And it is quite possible that within a few months, we will have a vaccine. So one way or the other, I mean, we're going to get out from under this, right? It's just a matter of how long and how much damage is done. But there is a vaccine on the way. So outside of vaccines, what about a cure? What about a cure? So there's a, I don't know why it's controversial, but there's a malaria drug called hydroxychloroquine tested at BC seniors homes. And there's been some success, I believe, with this in the United States. Uh, Donald Trump himself has mentioned this. And, you know, before you say anything to criticize Donald Trump, he's, if he's mentioning it, it's because um, a medical advisor or, or somebody that's deeply involved in this has brought it to his attention. It's not just him, you know, reading, reading off the back of the National Enquirer, right? So a controversial anti-malaria drug is being trialed as a therapy for COVID-19 at the BC Seniors Care Home, which is the epicenter of the province's novel coronavirus outbreak. So if anybody has heard this, um, I have touched on it briefly, but the Lynn Valley Care Center, um, the Lynn Valley Care Center has become an epicenter. And the reason for that is a healthcare worker um, from overseas was visiting I think, uh, I think for Chinese New Year, I, I, that I don't know for sure. Uh, anyways, they came back and that led to the infection or the transmission of the virus in the Lynn Valley Care Center where everybody is extremely old and, um, you know, obviously in, uh, in precarious health as it is. And that's where the majority of the deaths had been. And that's uh, essentially where things started in the province. So 46 residents and 24 staff at the facility have been tested positive for COVID-19. So 46 residents and 24 staff at one location. Think about that for a minute. Uh, the drug is being administered to all residents of the virus-stricken building known as the lodge at the care home with the exception of those who opted out of the trial. So probably those who opted out had um, very mild symptoms, I would imagine. I mean, if you had, you had bad symptoms, why the fuck would you opt out of that, right? Um, hydroxychloroquine is a Health Canada approved drug which has been used to treat mal malaria for more than half a century. It's also used as a treatment for lupus. And um, this has been used by a few people in the States with um, promising effects. 
So that is going out. It's also being tested by a team at the U University of Manitoba. So um, these tests just started. So we should have some results, I would think, within a week. Um, I know this virus tends to hang around for a long time, but you would think within a week we should have some indication of um, whether it's successful or not, right? And let's hope it is, because I would much rather uh, take something like that, hydroxychloroquine, than um, wait around for a vaccine or just stick with this fucking isolation forever, right? So there is that. Another positive, um, another positive piece of news uh, when it comes to transmission of the virus, and I covered this before, but people with type O uh, blood are less likely, not immune, but are less likely um, to acquire this virus. And why do I say that is good news? Because, I mean, you know, people with type A blood are more likely to acquire the virus. Well, the reason is because um, type O blood is the most uh, ubiquitous, the most predominant blood type in the world. So if there is one blood type that you would want to be somewhat immune to this, um, it would be the, the most uh, popular blood type. I myself have type O, type O negative, which is in very high demand. Did you know, look, I'm gonna drop another knowledge bomb on you guys here. Type O negative is the only blood type that can donate to every, every other blood type. Only one, that's type O negative. So hey, another guy, another useful guy in the apocalypse, just saying. Okay, so that's not it. I have more white pills for you. More white pills. More good news. Okay. Okay, so celebrities. I've covered some of the celebrities before, right? Um, so far, and one, one, one other interesting, amusing side note. Uh, if you're familiar with the United Kingdom, when this first broke out, I guess, well, when it first really started to gather steam, I suppose about a month ago, um, the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, Boris Johnson, said that um, we're going to practice herd immunity. So um, what's herd immunity? Well, first of all, <laughs> I take exception to the word herd. I mean, essentially, they're referring to their population as cattle, right? That, that's one strike right there. Uh, secondly, that's pretty reckless. Essentially, what Boris Johnson was saying was he was coming out saying, well, look, we have this thing. Um, we don't want to interrupt the um, we don't want to interrupt our free flow of people and multiculturalism. We don't want to disrupt the GDP and 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 the economic system at all. We don't want any disruption to those things at all. So um, unfortunately, some of you are going to die, but that's a sacrifice I'm willing to take. Gee, thanks, Boris. Thanks, buddy. Um, but that, um, I, I actually thought that was a parody when I first heard it, but sure enough, that was the intention. But they have since um, pulled back from that, and now they've kind of fallen in line with the rest of the countries in quarantine, isolation, flattening the curve. And Boris. Boris, the prime minister, has decided to lead by example. He has contracted COVID-19. That's right. The prime minister of the United Kingdom has contracted the coronavirus. So we'll see how he gets on. Thanks, Boris. Way, way to step up and be one of us, right? Be one of the population. Show us how it's done. Prince Charles also has it. Um, Rand Paul has it. Prince Albert has it. As we know, Tom Hanks and his wife, Rita Wilson, contracted this, and they have now been cleared. Uh, Sophie Gregoire Trudeau, and you know what? Um, where were you thinking, Justin Trudeau? Sophie's not bad, right? Uh, Sophie, yeah. Yeah, I'd hate for something to happen to Sophie. But she has it, and she's looking good. And uh, Idris Elba, you know, these basketball players, who, lots of people, lots of these celebrities. And why do I bring this up? Why do I bring this up? The guy from Game of Thrones, you know, that redheaded, um, uh, what the hell was he? The guy with the redhead hair and the beard on uh, Game of Thrones. He played a wildling. Anyways, Tormund, yeah. 
So he has it too. But why do I bring this up? Well, because none of these people have died, right? All these celebrities have had it. Placido Domingo is another one, and he's quite old, uh, as is Prince Charles, uh, as is, I mean, Tom Hanks is in his 60s. And they've, they've all had it, and they are all recovering. I think Sophie, uh, that's the one that would have hurt me the most, to be honest. I think Sophie is, um, Sophie's gotten better. Tom Hanks has gotten better. Idris Elba, I'm sure, will get better. So not a single one of these guys has died. There have been a couple of celebrities that have died, but I've never heard of them before, so... Take that for what it's worth. So that is a white pill as well. There are a lot of famous people getting this and they haven't died. So that's a pretty good sign. Another white pill. Canada is among the top world performers in testing for COVID-19, despite shortcomings. So if you live in Canada, take some heart. Take some heart that are stifling at times, politically correct, you know, syrup drinking, pancake flipping, Tim Hortons guzzling, uh, beer chugging country is doing well. Canada among the top performers. Figures indicate 34,000 people have been swabbed for the pathogen across Canada compared to 23,000 tests in the U.S., which has 10 times the population and number of COVID cases. Now, this is an old story, uh, but but like I said, in British Columbia, at least, um, we can see that, um, you know what? things aren't looking as bad as you would initially expect. And we even had our top doctor, Bonnie Henry, come out and say she's cautiously optimistic, right? So I, we're probably, even in British Columbia, I don't think we're near the peak of this yet. But, I mean, things feel like they're, they're holding together a little bit, right? <clears throat> okay, another white pill. Another white pill for all the environmentalists. And you know what? I got a lot of shit last year, a lot of shit on Facebook because uh, do you remember the girl Greta Thunberg? Greta Thunberg. Now I got nothing against. Well, I shouldn't say I got nothing against her. I, I do find her a little bit annoying. Okay, fair enough. Uh, but she's a kid, right? And um, you know, I, I said I feel like all this is manufactured when she came out and she was berating everybody and saying, "You have stolen my childhood. How dare you!" And I don't want to mock Greta. But, um, you know, I, I thought the whole thing was kind of staged and, and, you know, I thought, okay, this just seems like this all seems very contrived, right? As a way of guilting people into another tax. Anyways, I wasn't on board. Let's long story short. And if you like Greta, Hey, good for you. You know what? I know a lot of people do. A lot of people say, say, don't criticize her. She's just a kid, but whatever, you know, you're going to be, if your face is going to be around the world then you're going to get criticized, let's face it. But anyways, one thing, whether you like Greta, hate Greta, indifferent, or somewhere in between. One thing I think we can all agree on is we want a cleaner planet, don't we? Don't we want nice water? Don't we want clean air? You know, when I was a kid, actually, see, a lot of things uh, you can say over time have gotten worse, right? And those of us of a certain age tend to be nostalgic and look back and reflect on the old days and say, oh, this was better, that was better, this was better. But I will tell you this. Uh, I remember when I was a kid, a lot of times people would have garbage in their car and they just, just huck it out the window, right? Uh, you'd see stuff on the side of the road. People would just throw bottles out the road, throw glass on the street. Um, like I say, just turf garbage out. And that has gotten way better. That's like, that's almost unheard of around here now. But pollution and greenhouse gas emissions have fallen across continents as countries try to contain the spread of the new coronavirus. Is this just a fleeting change or could it lead to longer lasting falls in emissions? Well, I mean, it does seem fairly obvious that if nobody can go anywhere or do anything, that um, emissions are going to fall, right? Um, and whether this leads to a permanent thing, you know, this, uh, you know, it, it's really kind of tied in with globalism, uh, emissions and pollution. Like, I mean, there's, there's no way to kind of separate the two, right? But at least we are getting some benefit out of this, right? At least we are getting some benefit for the environment. And whether you're an environmentalist, environmentalist or not, or a green supporter or not, all of us, I think, want a cleaner planet. We just, where we differ is over how to implement it and what works and what doesn't and what's fair and what's a scam, you know, more or less the details, but the overall objective, I think most of us are on board with. And further to that, uh, 
Francesco Del Rio. Francesco Del Rio. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, boars in the middle of my hometown. Dolphins in the port of Cagliari. Ducks in the fountains of Rome. Venice canals now clean water full of fishes. Air pollution dropped. Nature's reclaiming its spaces during quarantine in Italy. So that's all pretty good, isn't it? I mean, and shit, it hasn't been that long. So, I mean, nature really rebounds quickly. I mean, I think that's another thing we can take away from this is that when we do take a break um, on the environment, that it seems to rebound really quickly, which is nice to see. Can't take it for granted, of course, but look at this, water of Venice. Like, I, I don't know what it looked like before, but this definitely looks pretty good. So we can see there are some cleaning things. People are looking out for the elderly. Um, we've seen a lot of nice uh, groups form on Facebook to look after people, help them out in tough situations. And this is a map, a solar or an aerial map uh, that tracks the levels of pollution. And here is uh, from January. And you can see just the change. Pollution drops in Wuhan. Okay, that's why it's, that's what the dates make Wuhan. So there you go. I mean, Wuhan, Jesus Christ, man. I mean, you guys are really cranking it out. But yeah, I mean, this, this effect would be uh, worldwide, I guess, at this point. What else do we have? We have cheap gas. You can't go anywhere. But hey, cheap gas is pretty good, right? We have cheap flights. Uh, some of the cheapest flights we've ever seen. Let's see. Hey, Air Canada is having a seat sale. Air Canada special offers. Flights to Italy are half price. Anyways, I'm kidding. Sure, we got cheap flights, but we can't fly anywhere, right? But hey, this won't last forever. You know what? If you're a person that can hedge, um, go ahead. And I, I will say something else. There is probably, probably a lot of good bargains on the stock market if you have money to invest. If you're one of those lucky people that was sitting on cash uh, when all this shit kicked off, then you can probably go out and scoop up some bargains. Um, airlines are probably rock bottom, but they're going to get bailed out. You know that. Banks are probably rock bottom, but they're going to get bailed out. Certain things, uh, you know, like Zoom, uh, Zoom video conferencing. I think that's a way of the future, right? Like I think working from home, I think that's going to be a permanent change. Um, education, education over video. I think that's going to be probably working its way into a permanent change. So there you go. There's opportunities. There's white pills. It is not all doom and gloom, right? Um, is there anything else? <sighs> Tomorrow. Tomorrow I am having a report from New York City. We're going to get to the bottom of some of the rumors we're hearing in New York. Monday, we're going to talk to a lab technician and probably Tuesday, Tuesday or Wednesday, a CFL player. And that will be the end of the COVID chronicles. Maybe might, I'm talking to some people. We might continue it. We'll see. But anyways, this is Saturday night, not Saturday night, Saturday night. Um, oh, you know what? One other positive, one other positive I wanted to mention binge watching. Uh, I got to binge watch for the first time in ages. Started watching Ozark. Ozark's pretty good. I think maybe if somebody out there is up for it, I think we should have a debate on Ozark versus Better Call Saul. Probably two, two of the best ones I would say on Netflix. That's my opinion. So anyways, go out, enjoy the rest of the Saturday night at home or in the backyard or in a responsible fashion, physical distancing from everybody. Remember, we are all in this together. And if we all stand together, can't nobody stand against us.